Okay. Hello. Uh, so the next one is me. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm Stefan Kober. I'm, I'm doing been doing container stuff for a while. Uh, I've been running this background and others before. Uh, this time, uh, usual disclaimer that I'm not a kernel developer, uh, so let me know if anything I'm saying is just wrong, stupid, etc. Um, but basically, one thing with one thing I've noticed for for a while, and we've been going around that topic over and over again in in, in previous Linux Primus discussion, is people seem to want to know what a container is, and well, the problem is that containers are not a thing really. Um, it's, it, it's just a set of namespaces and other uh, security features put together to give the user space illusion of a container, which means that when someone asks for a container ID, there is no such thing that we can really give them. It's like, do you want to know the inode number of the PID namespace? Do you want to know the user namespace ID? Like, what do you want? Um, like, and it could easily mix things up with like multiple containers still using the same PID namespace, but the containers still using the same user namespace, and like what your definition of a container is ends up being a problem. And I think that's why we've been going in circle for years now, trying to solve the like what's what's a given what's this thing, uh, effectively. And like like the reason for why you might want that, that information kind of varies. Like uh, there's been discussion for like you know, things like anything from auditing uh, to tracing to just um, as an L, like be, having a security module, like an LSM, be able to to go and react, like check if it's a container, check who's running it, that kind of thing. Um, doesn't really matter. Pretty much everyone wants the same thing fundamentally, but uh, we just haven't found a good way to do that. So, like kind of thinking about it and looking at other things that have kind of come over the mailing list for like quite a few years back, actually. Uh, one of the one of the questions like, do we need to make it about containers? We might not need to. Um, fundamentally, what we seem to need is a way to to tag a process and all of its children in a way that's immutable, so that the container manager or whatever other tool want, who wants to use a similar mechanism can go and create a tag saying this like this was created by me, so set the runtime or something like that to to some string, and this is the identifier that I use to track this thing, and then any process of processes in, in the tree will automatically inherit that tag in a way that cannot be modified. Um, each process can set additional tags if it feels like it, but it can't override anything it inherited. And that gives us that property of now being able to look at any process on the system and know exactly what container ID this is, even though the kernel has no such concept. Uh, effectively making it up to whoever created the container, in this case the runtime, to actually set those kind of attributes and then be able to consume that everywhere else. So that's kind of the general idea. And it's also, also like it's not something completely new. Uh, there was a uh, back in, actually I have the mailing list open somewhere, uh, I think about 2016, 2017, 20, uh, 2016, October 2016, um, that a uh, p-tags LSM, so process tags LSM was, was um, sent to the mailing list. And at the time it was really meant as an LSM, um, which I, I would probably argue is not probably the best fit these days. Um, but with kind of the same concept of, hey, you can set tags and you can then react on those tags and you can use that to, to make policy decisions. I don't think, like my opinion is that, like this doesn't really necessarily make sense today as an LSM. It makes more sense as generic infrastructure on uh, processes so that we can we can use that, yeah, if you want to use it for security decisions, that's fine. You can use like the eBPF LSM and then the eBPF LSM can look at those tags and can take actions based on those tags, that's fine. But it also allows anything else, whether it's tracers, whether it's debugging tools, whether it's whoever else, to go and look at those tags and, and pretty easily know what's going on. Now, I think for the for this to work nicely, like some of the attributes I kind of got in mind for this stuff is okay. Sure, we want kind of a rough thing looking like key value. Hey, set the thing, and then it just gets inherited, um, like passed on to all of the children, and can't be modified. That's nice, but we also need to know who created this thing, like who created the tag, because we don't want an unprivileged user to be able to just like create a container runtime and container ID tag and then the rest of the system, assuming this was created by a, the actual container manager running as root on the system. 
But to do this, all we really need is to capture the credential, like effectively like a file, as part of the tag, so that we know who actually created and sent the tag. At that point, we can easily check if it was real root who did it, or if it was render user on the system. And we can easily then have, if it matters for a policy decision, then you just check both. You check, okay, I want this tag to be set uh, for me to trust it, and also need it to be, have been set by root um, so that I can trust this thing. I think that's basically, um, kind of basically the idea there. I don't know how much of the of what was submitted back in 2016 could necessarily be reused to do this. Um, but the concept doesn't seem to be necessarily, like necessarily overly complicated either, and seems like something that could be useful to a bunch of people, even outside of just, hey, what's, a what's the idea of this container and keeping track of it. Um, I think that's pretty much what I've got, so we can go to questions, ideas, throwing tomatoes, whatever. Uh. Uh, so, uh, you know, this has come up many, many times, right? Oh. Um, and not just in the container context, but generally, like for system, we found our answer in C groups, right? Like you did not mention the word C groups uh, once during your talk, and yep. in particular, the last part that we were talking that you were talking about that sounds like delegation, which is like this one thing that C groups really nicely answers to you, right? Like because you 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 tag things by adding them to a C group, and then you can delegate further down the tree with permissions and whatnot, so that uh, people can uh, split things up further. So uh, yeah, why isn't C groups the thing that you're looking for? So I mean, C groups have been yeah, and I should mention that like C groups has been effectively used for that, and like we've seen some amount of it in in like if you look at the tools like you know PS Top and others, they effectively try to to pass the C group path to try and figure out that information in some ways. They try to guess like <laughs> oh, if the C group pattern kind of looks like this thing, that's probably been created by Alexi or Docker or whatever else. And then I'm going to go and split things on the dot and pick the third field and hope that this is the container so ID. Like, it, there's a, like because C group is, for example, first time, there's a bit of a lack of structure, uh, like the, a lack of, of ability to add additional metadata, if you wish. No, it has that. Uh, Systemd attaches a lot of metadata these days to extended attributes because you have unprivileged, mm. unprivileged uh, X address on the C groups. Okay. So for us, uh, it's, it's, it's a way how you com communicate um, lots of meta information between. Uh, uh, like loosely coupled services, for example, so that mm -hmm. one creates a C group, sets a couple of X, 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 X attributes in it, and the other one consumes it. So uh, um, I don't know, for, for us, it's okay, kind of so external problem. attributes, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you don't, obviously, with, with Fastem, you don't get, so external attributes, that's nice, but you need to be the owner of the, um, of the C group to be able to set that. This mechanism allows any one, like any, any task creator to do this for like their subtree, effectively from that point on, which you couldn't do. Um, of course you can. <laughs> because well, you, you, you it's a model it of further, delegation. You yes, to exactly. Further to, to the it's exactly. So yeah. it's the one, uh, the, 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 the manager or something that calls your service that sets up the labels on your service, and then you can below that do your own stuff. So it's exactly the security model that should be, I think. Um, also, the other the part is uh, um, like we can securely derive the C group already from PIDFDs and also these kind of things. And in BPF, for example, the C group ID is there. You can write BPF LSMs trivially that um, uh, uh, use that for information. We can you, we can send notifications out uh, when something changes that has the C group uh, ID in there. So and it's hierarchical. It's it's all there. So um, I'm really wondering what 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 else you actually missing. I mean, the, the problem with the, with using zgroup IDs is that that doesn't that isn't it isn't hierarchical if you're matching a zgroup ID inside an EPPF hook, right? Like if you wanted to, let's say you wanted to have a container that has an entire systemd tree inside it, and you want to have an EPPF hook for like for like this container, you're if you if you're hitting something that's inside five layers deep inside the thing, it's not going to match as the container. It'll match as whatever the thing is underneath. Well, but you can go up the tree. That's not the problem, right? Like in the well, BPF thing, that. you can. Of course, you can. Yeah, in the BPF code, you can, we, we do this. Like, I mean, it, it's like how, how you, like in systemd, we enforce uh, various security policies through, through BPF, uh, like, I don't know, device nodes and things like that, and we always go up the tree because we need to, to make sure that we enforce all the policies on all the C groups uh, up the tree. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is all doable and not just that, but being done. <laughs> mm. So um, from my perspective, the answer is that. It's, it's, it's C group, and it's, it's, it's already um, uh, patched through so much of the stack. Um, and as far as I know, even the, the Docker worlds and everybody else creates a C group. So uh, just embrace it. I mean, it's shit mm. for many reasons, but I think it's, uh, it's uh, everything's shit in this world. <laughs> <laughs>
and on that lovely note, um, no, I was gonna say, the, the thing I like about it from a container perspective is like, we do so many things aside from secrets. Secrets are not the only thing we can pick up containers. And the thing is, is that the like nicest, uh, from, my, from a container perspective, the like nicest model for, for set, attaching something as a container would be like the, I mean, not exactly the second model because second applies to the current process. It'd be nice if it was like on exec, but like that kind of model is like the model that, at least from my perspective as a container runtime um, author, is the thing that makes the most sense because like yes, you have C groups and and yes, in theory, like yes, we configure a C group for everything, but like containers can share C groups. Like like these are now again in practice persistent D and so on and so on. That's not a thing that people do for certain things. But like you you can do it. There's no um, like you, you could probably yeah, use um, immutable process tags too, and then. Yeah, yeah. Then not use them properly, but that's your own fault. Then I mean, it's just C groups is there. It's a way of labeling processes. Um, you don't like, you know. Initially, people thought it was about resource management. Um, we initially didn't use it for resource management at all in System D yeah. because we cre used it exactly for the labeling thing and the inheritance and things like that. Um, so I don't know. Like uh, I think C groups your answer. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I mean, like you know. I had on like I'm not sure if you were in the in the other MC where we had the wish list thingy. Like one of the things that I initially had on my wish list was always that we could have extended attributes on proc uh, like on slash proc uh, pit or something so that we can tag things properly. Um, since we have this on C groups nowadays, I'm not asking for this anymore, right? So uh, um, for me, this is the answer. But uh, yeah, you have to come uh, come to your conclusion. I think uh, I think. Uh, it would be wise if uh, container managers and such would um, arrange things always um, in C groups to match the hierarchy of, of, of whatever they want to expose there. And then the rest is kind of natural. And don't be afraid of deep nesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's kind of the, that's kind of the process. Like if we want to replicate this with purely with C groups and we want to have the same flexibility, then every single thread would have its own C group. Which I that would I mean that's not impossible. Whether it's wise, it's another question. I don't know, and it's not clear that people necessarily need that amount of, of flexibility either. So it might not be a problem with just using think, using Secret the way it's used today. Um, if there is like a strong interest for like getting the flexibility of like having every single process being able to set its own things just for its own direct children, then you effectively need to delegate to every single process and getting every single process to have its own C group, not just every single service, which might end up, I mean, it's not really a performance issue yet, but it's gonna be a lot of C groups to look at. So my point of view on this is, you want to sometimes allow that and sometimes you don't. Turns out C group FS gives you that control to some to so some degree, right? Like, I mean, there's still permissions and wealth and stuff like that, and it's a pretty coarse thing. But still, I would say, yeah, delegation, uh, whether you want to allow it or not, is kind of up to you. Um, uh, I don't think single process containers, I don't know, in my world view, that doesn't, that doesn't compile, but I don't know. I mean, but, I mean, that's what a lot of people use, like, a lot of application contains and stuff, that's, that's what people use, like, I mean, if you're, if you're going just by numbers, that's like the vast majority of containers out there, right? Um, the thing I was gonna say is that, I mean, yeah, it's one of the things where like it, I think that um, there are a lot of things, like even looking at the example we had with the CPU ID thing, um, the model that they would want, at least from what I understood, the model that would make sense for that would be basically this, but it would be like an on exact thing. And there are a lot of things that are like that, where, um, yes, you can tie it to a C group if you have a particular model, which again, I'm not saying that like, it's obviously it's the case that everyone uses systemd in practice, and obviously that's a model that is used in practice. But like the um, there mean, are cases where like that again because it's like when you're managing a container for runtime that is um, your yeah. I get that C groups would work in practice, but it's like it seems like a lot of these things would um, would benefit from having this kind of generic thing that would be able to have that model because uh, like the discussions of stuff that with, oh, we should attach it to SecComp and on its own, it's a common thing because that's the model people want for a lot of things. Uh, just to say that I'm not opposed to this thing, like, and maybe we would even use that for some things. Um, I'm just saying like, uh, um, uh, uh, you can save yourself a lot of work <laughs> if, you, if you just do the secret thing yeah. because you cannot avoid it anyway. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to the next thing. Mm-hmm.